Basically, it's applying mechanical laws to biological movement. So looking at movement in terms of force vectors and joint torques and ground reaction forces and things like that. Um, so mainly what I do when I'm looking at people is I look at how joints line up. I look at the coordination of how they move um, and kind of try to infer how you're producing force and transferring force. Uh, and the main forces we're dealing with are you know, the force of gravity, um, the force that you create with your own muscle tension, and then also, you know, bands and stuff like that fit the kind of separate. can overload certain tissues, certain muscles, and lead to chronic injury or even acute injuries can often be traced back to um, an inefficiency or deficiency in mechanics. Kind of the goals of this workshop, over the last few years that I've been doing this, I've done a lot of individual assessments and I kind of find some common issues that I see pretty much in every one that I assess. Uh, and these issues can kind of be traced back to elements of the modern lifestyle that kind of predispose you for inefficiencies in mechanics. So the goal of this workshop is I want to kind of explain these concepts to you, these major <coughs> issues that I see, uh, and then I want to take you through some exercises. So this is going to be very hands-on. Take you through some exercises to kind of illustrate these concepts, uh, but also kind of show you how you can start towards improving them. Because like I said, chances are you guys all have at least one of these issues where you're a little bit deficient you could improve. You're gonna go down on your back, and I brought towels for everyone. Uh, you wanna use the ground to help you get into a neutral position. Your lower back does have a natural curve under it. It's not flat, so this towel helps support that curve. So for all of that breathing, you're gonna lay on your back, feet flat, Hands just below your belly button. On your inhale, you're trying to expand as much as possible. On your exhale, you're trying to hollow out as much as possible. And once you get all the air out of your lungs, you hold it for a couple counts, because on that exhale, you should feel your lower abs draw up. You should feel your pelvis tilt back slightly into a neutral position, and that's the movement that you want to master. So again, it's a big inhale, a big exhale, hollow out as much as you can and hold it for a couple counts. Everybody good with that? Okay. And so kind of what the function of your core is in athletic movement is to transfer force. Right, you produce force with your legs, you transfer that force through your cord into the bar, into your arms, uh, whatever you may have. So if you have a weakness in your core, right, your, your pelvis is unstable, your hip joint, your legs attached to your pelvis, so you can't possibly get the most out of your legs, right? Your, your rib cage sits on top of your pelvis, your shoulder girdle attaches to your rib cage, so if you have an instability in your core, you can't possibly get all you have out of your arms. Right, so it all starts with the core. So make sure you can slide it. So for an unsupported dead bug, it's the same setup. I pull up my lower abs to flatten my back to the ground. I co-contract my abdominal wall to glue my ribs down. But now I have both feet in the air. Right? We'll also go both hands in the air. You're going to extend opposite arm and leg, ideally to the ground, keeping neutral spine. On the way up, the first thing you do is tense a little tighter in anticipation of the force that you're about to generate to move your leg back up. Then you come back to your starting position. So you reach out. Now let's say I get here and my towel starts to slip. I stop, tense up. That's the end range of the movement. The goal is to get to the ground, but if you can't do that with a neutral spine, there's no point in forcing it, right? And then back. abdominal wall is co-contracted, but not nearly as much as when I lay down and do a dead bug or when I get under a bar and do a squat. Um, and going along with that theme of there's gradients of, of activation, uh, when you're doing explosive movements, 
So say a jump or a sprint. Those movements operate on like pulses of force, right? When I go to jump, I do a pulse of force to extend my hips, knees, and ankles to get my body up in the air. That pulse has to start from your core. Otherwise, you're gonna get some movement in your pelvis and your spine as you do the jump or the pull or whatever explosive movement you're doing. That movement is not gonna contribute to the jump itself, so it becomes less efficient. You lose some of that force that you generated with your legs. So we're gonna do one last variation of the dead bug that works on that kind of pulse generation, that explosive movement. We're um, gonna set up just like you did for the supported dead bug. So one foot on the ground. You're gonna go one leg straight, the other arm overhead. And the first thing you're gonna do is get into your abdominal brace. So draw up your lower abs, tense your abdominal wall so that your back is neutral, this towel's pinned to the ground. You're gonna do a big inhale. Then you're gonna exhale, tense your abs, and generate a pulse of force from your hip flexor, from your lat, to kick your arm and your leg off the ground. And that sequence is very important. So it's exhale, tense, move, right? And you can spread it out as much as you want to start. Eventually, you wanna make it so smooth that you can't really see that sequence, but it's still happening in that order. So again, I set myself up, Take a big inhale, keeping everything braced. On my exhale, I tense my abs, and then I move. So inhale, exhale, tense, move. And it's one quick pulse. Keep your head flat, we're just moving shoulder and hip. Keep your head on the ground. Yep. One knee bent, other leg straight. 